A lot of people think that being plant-based or vegan is giving something up, but I just really want to express that it's taking something on not giving something up. It's making you feel better. And you're the one in the, the power seat as women. And even in this country, black women have been shaping the food that goes on our plates for hundreds of years. And people don't even realize it. Like we are at the core of that. Welcome to Securing the Bag, the Roots exclusive series that's all about work, entrepreneurship, and the secrets to success. Today, our guest is actress, singer, musician, and activist, Persia White. You may know her from her role as Lynn on the hit series Girlfriends, but as you're gonna find out, she's got a whole lot more going on. A lot of the artists that we talk to, when we talk about you know how they got started in the first place, they say that you know their parents have nurtured their creativity mm -hmm. and helped them get to where they are. Is that the case with you? How did you kind of get uh, interested in? I was just always dancing and tapping and singing. I was that little kid, and um, my mom did nurture it, but honestly, it was strangers too. Like, um, there was a ballet teacher who I did a free class with and she said she should be dancing. And so my mom couldn't afford it, so she gave me like a scholarship. She created a scholarship so I could dance. And um, same thing happened later with acting. Some talent agent saw me and I was just like doing all these voices and dancing and singing in Coconut Grove. And they were like, this kid, is this an actor? And I was like, what? Oh yeah, I want to act, you know? And then they were like, okay, well you can come and do a free course at the Coconut Grove Children's Theater. And I was like, so there was people who helped me too. Um, my mom was like, well, what do I do with this? She wanted me to be, do something more safe, you know, because she's a teacher and my sister's a teacher. And I said, well, maybe I'll teach acting one day, you know, but I want to do it too. So there was nurturing, but it was also like random too. So I want to talk about your music a little bit. You dropped a new single called Vampire this week. And if you have not checked out the video, the visuals are stunning. Thank but you. I have to ask, I mean, I tried to, I was going to try in my intro to describe your music and I couldn't really figure out what kind of box to put it in. So I think I want to let you do it. How would you describe your sound? I don't know how to describe it either. I just say kind of electronic. If you know what trip hop means, like from back in the day, not many people know what that word means. It's like I think about attack. tricky when I yes, okay. like and massive attack and those old that that kind of vibe. It's like slowed down hip hop in the way of the beats. I'm in love. I'm in love with a vampire. So what inspires you know your music? You're getting ready to drop a new album called Shades of Black, and on June thirtieth. What, where does the inspiration come from? I think um, my love of cinema, you know, and visuals are, are where I paint. And so a lot of it comes from uh, visual landscapes. So that a lot of it is soundtrack oriented. That's what I wanted to do because um, I love making film and I, I shot the, I directed the video and wrote the video too. So I see a lot of um, potential with the combination of visuals and music and a lot of it's inspired from, but also it's inspired by love. I think emotional landscapes inside of you that get to be expressed sonically. It's the most pleasing thing ever. And I stopped doing music to do acting. And then it's been really nice um, delving in to doing this album. And uh, it started on a strange, because it was before the pandemic, I wanted to do it. And then everything kind of shut down. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I think all of us are changed um, after that. And uh, it, I had a lot to say and felt a lot. Plus I lost some people, so um, I lost some loved ones. And so that is a, it's cathartic. So you're in town, you're speaking at the Vegan Women's Summit, yeah. and you're talking about why black women are the most powerful plant-based consumers. And I think you're right, thinking about that. I mean, in most households, it's the, the black woman who's controlling everything from mm -hmm. the shopping list to mm -hmm. what goes into the shopping cart and ultimately ends up in the home. So what was your message? I think the message is that, you know, we don't realize our own power and to take back our power. A lot of people think that being plant-based or vegan is giving something up, but I just really want to express that it's taking something on, not giving something up. It's making you feel better. And you're the one in the, the power seat as women. And even in this country, black women have been shaping the food that goes on our plates for hundreds of years. and People don't even realize it, like we are at the core of that. And if you can change the perspective of the women and they start cooking it and making things delicious, because I think that's part of, that's how my husband turned vegan was, he said literally, it was just because you cook well. 
he said, kept going, what's that? Like, I want a little bit of that. And then when he tastes things, he was like, okay. And then he finally was like, I wanna, I wanna do what you're doing because you, you're doing really well and this tastes really great. And so I think the cooking and what we do in the kitchen and, and convincing kids and husbands is probably the core of true change. Because if you just change yourself, that's one thing, but to help your family change, I managed to change, get my whole family like my mother, my sister, my brother, my daughter, my husband, to slowly turn vegan or vegetarian, like all of them. And I never thought that was possible because back in the day, oh, yeah. everybody was like, what? <laughs> like, no, you get extreme resistance. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to keep making delicious food, pushing forward, changing the narrative. Yeah, I mean, you talk to black people and you mention the word vegan and, you, you know, they might turn their nose up or think it's something that's weird. But lately, you've seen that it's kind of catching on in our community with people like Tabitha Brown yes. and Pinky Cole, who I love, Slutty Vegan yes. is my favorite. Yes. Why do you think it's becoming more popular in our community? I think because black people, I think in America especially, when you go, hey, check this out, and you wake, this community wakes up to truth, it's like... It's, it's hands down a, a massive change and shift. It's revolutionary. And unlike other communities that are kind of resistant to, you know, I just feel like we know what it's like to have a wool pull over our eyes. And when you, you're trying to clue people in, I don't know, I've had a lot of success in the past with, you know, working against um, the food industry, targeting urban communities um, for fast food and liquor and cigarettes. Like it's, it's targeted and you realize that you are being targeted as a consumer and your dollars and you, what you put in your mouth is part of a political system in place. I think that's, uh, it's, it's mind and your families are dying and you have diabetes, things that you don't need to have, that's revolutionary. So when we find that out, I mean, the people change and then they get excited about it and then the shift is, is occurring and there's so many young, these, these Gen Zers are blowing my mind. I, I just love it so much. <laughs> My daughter said, Mom, you and Lynn were just a little before your time, is what it was, because <laughs> we used to get so much heat. Yeah. You know, and then now they're just like, they're so bold. And well, I mean, are you a Gen Zetter? You look like. Oh, no. no. No, 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 no. Okay. I think we checked the same <laughs> box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know what I mean. There's yeah. a new generation that's just like, what and curious and and ready to make change they're not afraid one of the obstacles that i've noticed just anecdotally from talking to black people one of the things that stops them from totally adopting a plant-based lifestyle is they think that it's too expensive is that true can you be vegan on a budget i mean it's kind of like people used to say that to me about fashion they're like you, you need a lot of money to look nice and it's like well to do it easily Yes, because it's all in Whole Foods and it's expensive if you want the fancy stuff. But also that's a, a little more processed anyway. If I just came back from living in Budapest for seven months, let me tell you, we have so many conveniences here in America and food and it's very, very minimal and very plain. There aren't all the vegan options that we have. It's very, very minimal. And I learned to, to everywhere I go, I just learned to cook better. I bring spices with me and it's all about spicy. Yes. And I was eating just, you know, vegetables, beans, rice, and tofu and tempeh. And um, I'm used to like a lot more fancy stuff here. You got all these restaurants in New York. It's like so nice, but it made me healthier. There was no eating out, very little. There's, there's fast food, but I don't want fast food. But I think that it's about how you cook, how you approach it. There's farmer's markets and rice, beans, and uh, like veggies cost a lot less than expensive meat. And if you don't get hooked on fast food, you know, you, your palate starts to change. You, you really enjoy these things. It's about cooking. Really, it's about cooking because some of the base meals are about how you marinate spices and make things savory. And I don't eat bland uh, food. I think that's another misconception. It's like I'm going to be having steamed veggies all day. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be that way. I, it is really lean for me because I've gotten used to enjoying things that aren't oily anymore or over process and your palate gets like picky it goes back to what we we used to be which is eating stuff from the earth and it tastes great when you savor it up but but sure. i just tell, tell people if you hang in there know <laughs> that your palate will change do you have a specialty like a, a specific vegan dish that you can just throw down in the kitchen that is amazing um yeah i would have to say well there's two one is breakfast but the other one is is italian yeah italian is amazing vegan like a bolognese with sun-dried tomatoes and 
smoked shiitake and like it it's okay. it's pretty amazing. And All then right. you can use the veggie beef if you want like some kind of ground in there and sometimes they do that. My husband likes that like savory with some vegan sausage and but it's about how you do it. That's the one that I think I've converted a few people. They're like, this is not meat. This is vegan. You're like, yes. All right, I'm gonna have to get that recipe from okay. you later. Okay. <laughs> it's been 15 years since Girlfriends ended. Now, you guys teased us with a little mini reunion in I that Blackish episode, and I now know. I can't stop thinking about it. I know. Do you see any kind of reboot? You know, I wanted something, or even just like a finale film, like people kept asking. And uh, as a writer and producer now, I have tried, but the rights are not owned by us. It's very complicated because it's owned by Mara and the studio. And if those entities don't um, want it to happen or they're too busy with other projects and don't want it to happen, then it can't happen because we've all actively said, yeah, we'll do it. Especially since we hear people want it. Hello. We thought it would yes. go away. <laughs> Actually, after two years, I was like, no one's going to want that in like a year or two. And then no. it's like... Let me tell you, ten <laughs> years later, come on, guys. Yeah. I will watch a rerun anytime I can. Why do you think we can't get enough of you guys? I mean, I can watch the episodes to the point where I can almost sometimes recite the lines. <laughs> Why can't we get enough oh, of you guys? I think it's the chemistry. I think uh, when we get together, like even on Blackish, we were laughing so hard going. Yes. It was like a day didn't pass. It was scary. It gave me goosebumps because I would hear like Tracy's voice, and I'm like, she's such a part of my daughter's life and my life that. It's just familiar to be on set, to, and you're like, yeah, it's been all that time. <laughs> and we just fall into a funny, even behind the scenes, laughing with each other and joking, and we're like, that is something that you can't fake. You have that or you don't, just like a relationship. Sure. Like, it's there or it's not. And then I just think that, you know, depicting black women differently, the way the different tones, the different vibes that people have, I don't really see that happening. It's still this. I think it just happened and um, sort of we slipped by the studio system a little bit and then then it kind of that was it because <laughs> like, we you know not about men it was a show about us and like our yeah. struggles and our things and that's hard to find uh, everybody wants to make it about the family unit which is great but it's nice to have a show for women and especially for black women so I don't know maybe there'll be something I even came up with an idea that I was so excited about to just help spin it, you know, to just be part of like a reunion that makes a new uh, girlfriends um, occur. That would be Okay, but you guys have to be in it. You can't yeah, have some, started. okay. We're, right. But we're like the old mentors. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if I want to like see any other kid. girlfriends. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> we like, you know, oh, you know, tell them how to use beauty products and navigate the world of men. <laughs> but, you know, let something else occur. I don't know. No. So let's imagine that it's happening. <laughs> Where do you think your character, Lynn, what would she be doing? Would she still be kind of freeloading all her friends? We talked or... <laughs> about this and we were like, no, Lynn will be the successful one. Like, I like you know, that. like she, her music took off in like Japan or something, like not here. You <laughs> I know, love like, it. I love she got, it. She got something going on and then we were talking, we've all discussed this, like it would be really fun to have Lynn not be the one. But the magic of this world, this, you know, nowadays that does happen. People Absolutely. who don't have anything one day, they get an idea and it goes viral and... She'd be like a vegan influencer on Instagram or something like that. I could right. see it. Totally. Yes. In Japan. <laughs> Since the show is called Securing the Bag, we have to always ask our guests when in their career they felt like they secured the bag. So when was that moment for you where you felt like, I have made it? I mean, I don't, I didn't, I don't ever feel that way. I always feel like there's more. Maybe that's why I still stay creative. I always feel like, no. If you're not, if you're not like up there, I feel like uh, you've got a long way to go. That's how I feel, because the, the neighborhood I grew up in in L.A., you just, you think you got yourself going on, and you're like, oh, I'm so famous, I got my, and then you look, and you're like, oh my God, that's, Ange that's Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett just walked in the room. <laughs> Viola Davis is here, and you're suddenly like, mm, I'm not doing that good. Because <laughs> there's always something to reach for, you know, so I didn't, I didn't, Ever, I felt like I got secured like the change purse with, okay. with girlfriends, That's probably fair. like probably like season five. I was like, yeah, this is good. I can get another tattoo because that was my thing. I would get a new tattoo each year if I kept succeeding because I, I don't want to be like all tatted because sure. it's, it's trouble. It's work. But each time I got another notch, I would go, OK, one more. I love it. Well, we love you here, Persia. Oh, we want to thank, thank you so you. much for stopping by and hanging out. with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.